Hi, this is Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at 2017, and this is Autodesk Mark Hamaker. And um, Mark, you guys have a, a booth here at the show. You've got some updates, but also let's dig into some trends um, regarding flame and how that fits into other workflows. I'm just going to let you go. <laughs> okay. You, I should have warned you. You're going to let me go. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, we're at SIGGRAPH. I think um, it's nice to have SIGGRAPH in LA this year. Uh, it's actually quite busy, which we've seen. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as SIGGRAPH itself, a couple of things uh, that I think it, almost on the trend side is, you know, one of the things we've noticed a lot, and we've been doing this in the last few years, is our booth has been getting smaller and smaller. And if you go by our booth now, you can see some product demonstrations, but really we also have a VR experience, some of our customers speaking. Um, one of the things we've been seeing, and we're starting to see other manufacturers doing the same thing, is really moving to like the, the speaker series, and we do a vision series where we bring in our customers. ILM is there, Weta Digital, talking about how they use not just our tools, but just how they work. And we're seeing a lot more of that, and I think that's an interesting kind of overall SIGGRAPH trend that we're noticing a bit more and more. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of products, I mean, we have some updates. I think just about every Autodesk product in the M&E space has been updated. Um, you know, we wanted to touch on Flame in particular. I think that's a good example. Uh, you know, we, we introduced Flame subscription uh, really, I guess, a year and a half, two years ago. And it's really been great for Flame because it made it uh, a lot more accessible. And what we're seeing is now the demand to kind of, in some ways, even change the way Flame works in the pipelines it's fitting in. Now, you still have the traditional Flame suites and the Flame artists that are amazing artists. They do great work. But we're also seeing Flame fit into like Nuke workflows, for example. And that's something I think a few years ago people wouldn't have expected us to be talking about. Um, but you know, the most recent update to Flame includes uh, Python API and some tools to actually help you tie into a mixed pipeline where it's not necessarily a hero box that sits by itself. Uh, and I think that's something we're seeing kind of overall in the industry. You know, all of our tools needing to fit into more open flows and you know on the 3d side you know we were just recently talking about supporting material x and you know things like this that uh you know we still want you to buy maya we want you to buy max we want you to buy flame but you know we don't want to trap you into a workflow because of a file format or you know that that's not the way to win uh, you know i think the the, the argument I mean, we've seen more and more integrated workflows. I mean, no no company is necessarily anymore just tying themselves to one particular product. So working together, playing well with others is is always a very good a very good thing. Um, now, just to touch on some of the announcements, some of the new stuff. Do you want to? Uh, there was an Arnold announcement. Can you dig into that a bit? Sure. Yeah. Um, so Arnold, you know, as part of Autodesk, is going strong. Uh, one of the things we did earlier this year is we announced subscription. That starts to make Arnold a lot more accessible uh, in terms of being able to afford it, to, be able to have some to buy it. Uh, what we've introduced at the show is actually a, uh, it's basically a promotion seller where you can get a five pack of Arnold licenses. The US pricing is $1,500. So, saying, well, I, I don't need one, I need multiples. I like that. You know, five's a good number to start with, and that's a way to kind of, um, Get people using Arnold and an existing render workflow, maybe they're asking more for capability. But uh, you know, people were asking for it, we're happy to have that out there. Uh, one of the other things we're doing is with the Autodesk collection, the any collection, which is you know, that's um, where you have one box motion blur and some services. Uh, we have promotion where if you work with a reseller, you can zero cost. So really an interesting reason to consider to a collection if you have that need, uh, not just from the content creator, all the way through final render. You know, so that's the interesting thing there. And of course, there's plenty of news. And Arnold 5 came out earlier, 501 release, which I think shows that, you know, as part of Autodesk, um, you know, we love Arnold and those guys are hard and they've got a steady drumbeat of releases, and you'll see more, you know, coming out. Also, with Arnold, those, um, five And take advantage of this as well. So that open piece out there, you know, if you want, we want to make sure. Um, so before I let you go, I wanted to ask a bit about trends and in terms of uh, virtual reality. So what are you guys seeing in virtual reality? Is it real? Is it VR? Um, what are you hearing from people? Yeah, I, I think um, so. I think VR is real for sure. 
uh, sometimes people say, I, I don't, Autodesk doesn't make a VR product, do they? But it's like the reality is, you know, 3D content drives these VR experiences. Um, and uh, what we've seen, uh, you know, I think a trend certainly is that there's something about people like it in a way that they haven't liked some of the other big changes in the world through the industry. Not that they haven't liked it, but, you know, I don't think stereoscopic was fun. And I remember initially people compared VR to stereoscopic workloads said it's going to go away like stereoscopic. I, I don't think so. You know, it's like HD when it came out. It was kind of driven by a regulation change. We knew this was coming and people were experimenting and doing interesting things. But I've not seen anything like VR in terms of uh, people getting excited, customers innovating, uh, companies working together, uh, doing all these things. I'll give you an, an example. One of the things we did that we thought was um, an interesting way to approach it was we did something called Journey to VR, where we took one of our top Maya guys, it's Daryl O'Bear, he's like the best Maya guy in the world, but he hadn't really done VR and he didn't know game engines or any of that, and he kind of took that journey and we documented it, tied it into some interviews with people in the industry, and people responded really well to it, because I think a lot of artists, a lot of people out there that aren't doing VR today, and it feels like everybody is, but the reality is not everybody's doing it, they want to learn about it and experience it, and realizing that a lot of the skills you have as a 3D artist or a VFX artist or a Max user, uh, they're applicable and you can really get a head start and move into it and your creativity and content is gonna help drive that experience and you can experience it in a whole new way. So I, it sounds a little fluffy, but I just I do think VR is, is a lot of fun and I think that is what's making it have this persistence and have it stick. Will it take over the world and be how we watch all entertainment? I don't think so. Uh, but I think there'll be an entertainment component. I think in manufacturing, you know, we, we see VR at Autodesk a little like 3D printing, which you remember they were saying you're going to have a 3D printer in every house and every room will have it. That hasn't happened yet, but there are whole industries that have been transformed by it around, you know, medical and creating cer certain parts of those. We think VR could be the same way for monitoring, for, you know, uh, use in manufacturing and seeing design. So it, it's pretty exciting. And I think it's definitely here.